Good morning, I'm Virginia and I study at the University of Manchester. I'm a paleobiologist and this morning I'm going to take you on a journey to the Caribbean, to the Cayman Islands, and tell you a tale of Cayman caves and fossil fauna, so a modern extinction event. And I'm going to be talking to you about how we can use preserved biomolecules to piece together an extinction event um, and apply it to a timeline. So the group of mammals that I'm specifically interested in that I'm going to talk to you about is rats. Um, or rodents, which introduces me to my alternative title, uh, My Rats of the Caribbean. <laughs> so the Caribbean is positioned here, <laughs> and the Cayman Islands are south of Cuba. So you can see them uh, here. And they consist of three islands. So you've got Grand Cayman, Little Cayman, and Cayman Brac. So the samples that I work on come from this small island of Cayman Brac. So today my talk is about Cayman Brac. And you might be wondering why I would want to study samples from such an undesirable destination. Um, so the Caribbean uh, island biodiversity hotspot encompasses the Cayman Islands and is a site of high endemism. So many, many endemic species um, and also a site that has lost over 70% of its primary vegetation. So with that loss, we've uh, lost a lot of biodiversity as well. And the Cayman Islands are arguably the most affected of all of the islands in the Caribbean, um, having lost four species of birds to date of four separate families, and all terrestrial endemic mammal species on the Cayman Islands are now globally extinct. There's a heavy number of introduced species as well. And now, on the Cayman Islands, all of the extant mammals are entirely consisting of bats. There are no other terrestrial mammals on, the, on these islands. So we've got the loss of many endemic forms, high levels of introductions, vast changes in the zoo geography. And the questions I'm interested in answering today are why has this mass extinction event occurred, when this happened, and specifically, how do we know the answers to these questions? So first of all, why did this happen? So the Cayman Islands are unique in which humans didn't discover them until really, really recently. So 1503, when Christopher Columbus sailed to the shores, uh, here's an artist's impression of the event, um, only in the last 500 years have humans had an influence on these islands. So compare that to every other island in the Caribbean, which was established up to 7,000 years ago. So we've only had 500 years to... Um, to um, change things on this island habitat and of course that's enough time to change pretty much everything. So yeah we really screwed things up. <laughs> so we've introduced uh, these species, so four species of rodent have been introduced to the Cayman Islands, the black rat, the brown rat, the house mouse and the Central American red agouti and together they have outcompeted the terrestrial endemic mammals consisting of five forms uh, one species of Copronis and two species of Geocopronis. And these guys are like big, uh, big rodents. So um, they're called Hootia, which I'll be using that word uh, <laughs> later on in the talk. And two species of Nesophontes are now um, extinct from the Cayman Islands. And this genus is now globally extinct. So Nesophontes is a, uh, it's called the island shrew. It's like a shrew-like mammal. And it's likely or thought to have diverged from all other species of mammals 76 million years ago, which is before the extinction of the dinosaurs. So we have lost these ancient lineages and they have been outcompeted by the endemic, uh, by the introduced species of rodents. So if we put what we know so far on a timeline, the estimated first date of human colonization of the Caribbean was uh, up to 7,000 years ago, but only in 1503 did humans come to the Cayman Islands. And since that point to present day, we've got extreme biodiversity loss. But how do we know? So luckily, the Cayman Islands are riddled with cave systems, and these cave systems over time have collected faunal remains. Uh, so animals uh, being deposited um, in these cave systems through time, which is essentially a subsample of biodiversity being collected through time, which is great. So the estimated uh, maximum age of these deposits go, runs all the way through to 10,000 years ago. And in 1938, we started investigating th these deposits, um, and only a handful of investigations have been done so far, um, just looking at what's present um, in, in various cave systems. And from 1938 to, to present, scientists have only ever investigated the morphologically identifiable bones. So no one has yet 
uh, took it upon themselves to uh, understand what's going on with the fragmented material, which makes up the majority of the assemblage and possibly and almost likely the, the oldest proportion of the assemblage. So I thought I'd give it a go. <laughs> so I utilize a, um, I basically do proteomics, which is the study of proteins, and I'm interested in collagen. So collagen is a sturdy triple helical molecule, which looks a bit like this, and it's present ex at extremely high abundance in all vertebrate bone. It also survives an order of magnitude beyond DNA, um, up to 3.5 million years. And the amino acid sequence changes through evolutionary time. So as animals diverge from one another and speciate, it's likely that their the amino acid sequence of the collagen molecule will change through time. So I use collagen fingerprinting. Um, which is a method of understanding faunal identity in bone fragments when you can't morphologically identify them anymore. So my supervisor, Mike, Mike Buckley, uh, set about working out whether these characteristics of collagen could be used to understand faunal identity in bone fragments. And the way we do that is we immerse a bone fragment that we don't know what it is in a weak acid, and that breaks down the mineral component of the bone and leaches out the acid-soluble collagen. And then we digest the collagen with a triptych enzyme. So here's the collagen molecule, digest it, and the triptych en enzyme basically chops it up into peptides. We then spot the mixture of peptides onto a steel plate, run it through a soft ionization mass spectrometer, and we acquire a fingerprint. Uh, so a peptide mass fingerprint, otherwise known as a collagen fingerprint, and on this fingerprint, all of the peaks, so, that, so each peak is related to a specific peptide of a specific mass. And the combination of these, these peaks or these peptides of specific mass is diagnostic to species identity. So we can work out what our animals are from our bone fragments. So I took some reference material for, from, base, uh, from uh, species on the Cayman Islands, present on the Cayman Islands, and I did collagen fingerprinting got the collagen fingerprints, and then laboriously looked through them all to find out which peaks were diagnostic to specific species or genus or family or orders. Uh, so we call these biomarkers. So each of these peaks is diagnostic to this species. And then I took 485 bone fragments from the Cayman Islands, did some collagen fingerprinting, and started matching up those biomarkers so I could understand what the samples were that we were looking at. So then I created this collagen catalogue. So this is a flow diagram of uh, biomarkers which identify all terrestrial vertebrates on the Cayman Islands. And I'm most interested in the, in the rodents, in the mammals, because they're most heavily affected. Um, so I was able to identify all of the terrestrial mammals to species level. So I have a mechanism to identify collagen fingerprints to species level in the mammals. Many of these markers are now new to science. So of my 485 samples, the majority of the samples were mammal. The majority of those mammals were introduced murid rodents, uh, which is worrying <laughs> because they, these, uh, these deposits are potentially 10,000 years old and the majority of the samples I was finding were introduced species. Um, and the, uh, the, another large proportion are the, are the hootia, so the large rodents, and I found one solitary bat bone in my assemblage. So we've got preserved bones. The cave system preserved the bones, a nice uh, environment to preserve the biomolecules, and we've got a method of understanding faunal identity. But in order to piece together a, um, a timeline, for example, so we can understand the extinction event, we need to, to create a temporal framework. So how do we do that? So I use radiocarbon dating. It's used to determine the age of an organic object, and it measures the activity of radioactive carbon, so carbon-14. So in a separate ex experiment, I took 18 samples of hootia from the cave systems, and I dated them. So I, I found, from my 18 samples, six gave me some dates, and these dates range from 400 years before present to 1,600 years before present. So the take-home message here, first of all, is that these endemic mammals are surviving well into the period of human arrival. So this sample, so humans arrived 500 years ago, this animal was still alive until 400 years ago. So that's point number one. Then, I ran, after acquiring the radiocarbon dates, I ran all of those samples for collagen fingerprinting. 
Um, and I found that every single sample that gave me a radiocarbon date also gave me a collagen fingerprint. But all of the samples that didn't give dates did not give fingerprints um, with 100% accuracy. So I thought, well, wait a minute, this maybe is a, an opportunity to use a cheap and very rapid uh, collagen fingerprinting technique where you can analyze thousands of samples over um, just a few days period as a potential screening technique um, for laborious and expensive radiocarbon dating. So I took 81 bone fragments from the cave systems and I collagen fingerprinted them all. Um, a handful gave me collagen fingerprints and then I cherry picked two of those out, sent them away for dating and acquired two dates of over a thousand years old. So this is a screening technique that allows me to cherry pick the samples that are reliable for radiocarbon dating. So the top spectrum here is, a, is the sample that's about 1,600 years old. It's Capronis, the, the fingerprint worked, and I was able to date that sample. And the bottom spectrum didn't work, and the sample could not be dated. So this technique is currently 100% accurate, and it's uh, radiocarbon dating is, is very expensive, whereas collagen fingerprinting is in incredibly cheap and quick. So it's a screening technique. So the known maximum survival time frame based on the radiocarbon dating that I've achieved is about 1,500 years. Now that collagen survival time frame therefore extends further than the point of human contact. So these bones have been deposited and we can understand the faunal identity and date them from the bones deposited both before human arrival and after human arrival. So who cares, right? Well now we have a temporal framework. So we have a tool set that allows us to understand and piece together this extinction event. So we can apply it to the Cayman Islands, we can learn from it and we can apply it to elsewhere in the Caribbean and elsewhere in the world. So remember that bat that I found in my assemblage? Well that bat turned out to be Eptesticus fuscus, which is the big brown bat and it's a species endemic to the to Cayman Brag but that has been extirpated and is still present on Grand Cayman but it's endangered. So. The sample that I found was from a cave system, which I propose is a roosting, uh, an old roosting site of this, of this species. So we can use this information to, to support maybe reintroductions of certain species that still exist elsewhere in the Caribbean to this island to try and restore some balance. So much more remains to be discovered. This is just a, a few examples of my research, um, but we need to keep exploring. Thank you to all of these wonderful people for making my research possible. And thanks to you for listening.